Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We are looking at the book of De Deuteronomy here. We're in chapter one right now, and this, it's a fascinating chapter as Moses is reviewing their history, to really so that they remember that history and don't make the same mistakes. Okay, we talked about in the last episode how God gave them the land, and Moses says and tells them, you know, Go take possession of the land. God is giving it to you to go take the possession of it. And what they did is they said, well, let's send some spies out ahead of time to go scout out the land first. And we learned, don't be scouting out the land. Just go and take the land that God has given you because uh, we're relying on God. We're not relying on our own abilities uh, to do this. Uh, today, it's entitled, The Lord Must Hate Us. And you're going to see why I came up with that title. We're reading from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 26 to 40 here today. A little bit, no, it's not too long, um, but you're going to see how this plays out. And in this, it, these three episodes, yesterday's, today's, and tomorrow's, kind of fit in together into one big story. So if you missed yesterday's, you probably should go back so you know what, what we're talking about here because it, it all uh, builds together. Um, but we're picking it up right now where um, they send out the spies and the spies come back and say, yeah, it's a good land and we got some fruit and stuff. But now, now let's see what happened here. This is verse 26 of chapter 1. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. Okay. Huge, huge mistake there. Because they scouted out the land, they, re they refused to go. They were like, we can't take this land. Uh, they got giants and everything. You're going to see what they say here. You grumbled in your tents and said, The Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear. They say, The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large, with walls up to the skies. We even saw Anakites there. Okay, The Anakites were known as giants. Um, then I said to you, Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt, all right, before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way to the, all the way you went until you reached this place. Verse 32, in spite of this, you did not trust the Lord your God. You went ahead on, of, on your own journey in fire by night and in a cloud by day to search out the place for you to camp and to show you the way, the way you should go. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, No one from this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give to the, your ancestors, except for Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and he will see it, and I will give it to him and his descendants. The land he set his feet on, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Huge thing. He followed the Lord wholeheartedly. And he was the one that, that stood up in argument and said, come on, guys, we can take this land. And uh, there was the other spies that were like, no, 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 we can't do that. Verse 37. Because of you, the Lord became angry with me also and said, you shall not enter it either. But your, your assistant, uh, Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it. Encourage him because he will lead the Israel into inherit it. And, little, and the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who did not know good from bad, they will enter the land. I will give it to them, and they will take possession of it. But as for you, turn around and set out toward this desert along the route to the Red Sea. Okay. These children, um, and, and the thing is, Moses is saying this right now, because these children that they're talking about in these last verses, those are now the adults. Okay. The, uh, the adults that said, oh, no, we can't take the land, they've all died away, just like what has happened here. I mean, just like what Moses said would happen. Now we're at the time where all those adults have passed away. There's none of them left, and it's just the children. So Moses is saying this because the children don't fully understand the whole, the real, the story, the backstory to all this. And so Moses is saying it. So that, that hopefully they'll know, oh, yeah, my parents died because they didn't uh, listen and obey God. And so hopefully they will go and take the land and listen and obey God. Okay. Uh, several things here. It's that, you know, they were afraid. They said there's Anakites in the land, giants. 
and when you think of giants, you oftentimes think of Jack and the Beanstalk uh, type thing, where you're looking up and you, you're seeing just the foot of the giant. No, these guys were maybe nine feet tall uh, compared to what the Israelites were. I don't know what the average height of the Israelite was at, back, at that time, but let's say you go to Guatemala. Um, the people in Guatemala are are short, and so you go as an, uh, a white gringo guy like myself going there, I'm taller than most of the Guatemalans, and that's just the way it is. So there's probably that that difference in height um, that you had the, the Israelite people that might have been a little shorter, but then you had these guys that were, uh, you know, nine feet tall all the time. So, yeah, it, it, it can be a little scary. Um, but the thing here I want you to see is the people said the Lord hates us. All right. They got that that crazy idea. The Lord did not hate them, but they got that crazy idea because they saw the impossibility of of that land. They saw that it was such a hard land um, to conquer, but they didn't realize God loves them and actually had a plan for them. And God loves them so much that he gave them that land, but they distorted it. They distorted it and said, oh, no, God hates us. And we can't possibly have that land. So you see, when you start relying on your own flesh and relying on your sinful nature, you start distorting the truth, okay? The truth that God loves me, and you distort it into God hates me. Like, what kind of goofiness is that, okay? But let me give you an example. We do this today. We go, um, let's say, you, you, for example, uh, in uh, you want to, it, God has clearly commanded that if if you love a woman you need to marry the woman and and you know be married to her okay and a marriage is between a man and a woman and so forth all right however today we've we've uh decided oh we know better than god and so we we say oh if i love a woman i'm gonna sleep with her first and live with her then maybe i'll get married to her you know if everything works out and then we're mad later when it doesn't work out and we say, God hates me, you know, because this happened and this happened. And I, now I, I, you know, might have a sexually transmitted disease or whatever. And, and, my, and this relationship is not right. Um, we're mad at God for that. But you weren't following God's plan to start off with is the whole thing. And because you weren't following God's plan to start off with, you have so distorted it that you think now God hates you. When God loves you and he had a great plan for you, but you refuse to follow his plan. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense um, here. And that's what was happening here with these people. They were like, oh, God hates us. No, God doesn't hate them. He, he loves them and had a plan for them, but they distort the truth uh, when you're when you separate yourself from God. Okay. And his plan. So don't be a one that separates yourself from God and, when, and uh, then distort the truth like that. Right. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue looking at this story in chapter 1, and we're going to see how it ends, and it takes a twist. Lord's blessing. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.